We still need to update these aliases, so we'll say page admin, page, page editor, and page list. Oh, one too many. Okay, page admin, page, page editor, and page list item. Page editor, page item, page... Mm. Okay, hopefully, if other people are using the line, they will stop. <laughs> okay, so we've got our aliases here. Let's create some class files for that. Um, this we don't really need to change, but we'll rename this. We won't create a new file for this. We'll just say page-admin. And in here, we'll just change this to React CMS. Page admin. We also need to remember to export that class. Okay, so that. Let's create a few more of those. Page. This is kind of a bit of boring setup, but anyway. D. Okay. Page. Page admin. Editor. <laughs> Page list item. How's the stream buffering looking now? Okay, so we have our four classes now. Um, we should just be able to refresh this, and hopefully that works. Yes? Okay, so my component is not defined. Let's have a look in here. Are we referencing my component directly? No. Uh, oh, okay, I see what's going on. So we forgot to change one thing here. I'll talk about what this prop types thing is later. I mean, I've spoken a little bit about it before, but I'll just give you a bit of a refresher later. Okay, refresh. Okay, my component. Okay. <laughs> Are there any questions so far? Any questions? Yes, no, yes, no. Questions from chat. It's probably a delay. If you have questions, ask them in chat. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. So we have no errors here. We have my component loading in here. Oh, and remember, we still have the click event on here. Anyway. Well, what do we want to do here now? We've got a way to... We've got like an... We've got a landing... Uh, like a landing point now. Um, a first step in our in our CMS, which is a page admin, and this is what we create by default. So now we need a way to feed the pages that we have hard coded here. Um, now we need to feed the pages that we've hard coded into this component, and the one way we can do that, uh, if you've done any kind of HTML before, is to give it as a property. So we can say something like pages is pages. Now these brackets just mean evaluate this JavaScript code, e evaluate this as JavaScript. You know, we could do something like these are pages, but that would give us the string value to that property. And what we're actually interested in is the array that we've got further up. So we use the curly braces and we say pages. Okay, how do we use that? Well, in ES5 classes, we have this constructor thing here, and this is responsible. Like when the thing, when an instance of this page admin is created, those props uh, get stored in a property called this dot props. So, with all React components, we need to have this render method that returns what the markup of this uh, component is at any time, and since it's a page admin, we want to show a list of pages. So 
One way we can do that is to return a, a list of pages. <laughs> okay, I'll say li and close li. Now within this, uh, do we want to do brackets? We don't really want to do brackets. Within this, we want to say something like this props pages map. Um, yes, function page. Now this is JavaScript, right? If you're unfamiliar with um, this kind of thing, what you probably want to do is MDN array map. And by the way, that's a really easy way to find out really good documentation about stuff. Like if you see function calls or whatever, go to Mozilla Developer Network. And the docs that you'll find there will have all sorts of useful stuff. How to use it, what it does, um, what browsers it's supported in, lots of really cool stuff. We're not going to look at that now. Just remember, MDN and then whatever JavaScript thing you're searching for. In this case, it's array map. So what this will do is it will go over each page in that pages array. And inside this function, we can return another thing. We can return, for instance, a page item. That's really interesting. What happens there? What do we expect to happen there? Any guesses? Well, we're getting the props from outside, and it's those five pages that we've hard-coded. So, theoretically, this should run five times. It should return five page components, and each of those right now are just returning a simple uh, my component. So we should see five lines of my component. What do we see? An error? Could be. Page is not defined! <laughs> okay, so another thing is that because we are loading this page in through page admin, because we are assuming a page component here, we need to import it. So we'll say page. Hopefully this imports. Yes? Yes? Okay, okay, so we're getting somewhere. Again, we have the five items here. We have the five iterations of page because we have five hard-coded page objects that we're passing in, but we're not rendering them out very well now, are we? Also, we get an error here which says we need a unique key prop. So how we solve that is where we start mapping here. The second argument to the map callback is an index. The number that that page is in the array. So we can give a key property here of i. It's a special property on these elements and it helps React to identify which elements can be removed or added or just ignored when React re-renders this as properties and state change. Don't worry about what those are exactly. We've seen properties briefly but we'll talk about them more later on. Okay, so now, well, now we're still rendering our five things. We don't have the error anymore and that's because page at the moment is just rendering a div with my component in. It's not actually rendering a list item. But we don't know if we wanted to render a list item, do we? I mean, maybe we want to do something like, well, since we know it's going to be in a list, render the list item around it. And maybe we change this to ol instead of li. So we know that because we're rendering these pages within a map function inside of a list, we're probably going to want them as li's. But what do those pages actually mean? Well, sometimes they're going to be editors, and sometimes they're going to be just normal list items. This will change the appearance slightly because now these will all be list items and divs within list items to be specific. Okay, again we need to move this key up because now we're not putting it at the root element. This is what gets repeated and this is what React wants that key on, or at least that's what the error is telling me. This should make the error go away, the warning. Okay, so we're rendering a bunch of list items and we're not getting any warnings. This is a really good step. Now, what do the pages look like? Well, I think in the pages we need to have a way of saying whether the page is busy being edited or not. Because sometimes it's going to be just a list item and sometimes it's going to be an edit view for each page. So in here we'll use a special property called state. And that's just a plain old object. And we can say something like editing, if I could spell. Editing is false. 
because by default we're not going to be editing a page it's just going to be a list item right okay so when we render this out we can do something like if this state editing <laughs> editing then return page editor else return page list item it's very simple how we construct these things how we stitch them together page list item okay now let's just change these quickly so that we can see the difference here editor list item okay let's refresh page list item not defined again I'm making exactly the same mistake I made before I had to import page in page admin in page I have to import the editor and the list item page dash editor okay now when I refresh this should work I hope <laughs> Okay, great. So the default state that's happening is that we have the list item showing because editing is false, right? Well, how do we change that? Maybe our page list item needs to have an edit link. That seems reasonable. So let's go to our page list item and instead of just showing a div with a click event, we can do something like div... Uh, I'll just leave that in there. But then we can have... Let's just make this multi-line. Okay, list item and then a href uh, edit. <laughs> okay, so list item and it has an edit link. Does that still work? Yes, it does. Okay, well, we're kind of off on formatting here. Maybe I'll just put a space there. Dum -dum 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 -dum. Okay, but that doesn't do anything. It just puts a hash on the end of the URL. That's kind of not great. What we want to do is we want to have this change whenever we click edit, so that instead of seeing the list item there, we see an editor there. That seems, that seems like an okay idea. Now, there are two ways that we can go about doing this, and one of them, there are many ways we can go about doing this. Two that should stand out, like as first guesses. The first is... We put some JavaScript magic here so that when we click this, it changes the view. And how it changes the view, we'll get to. But the idea is that the JavaScript that changes that view is in this component. Now, having the event is not so much the problem, but when we're designing these components and we're trying to get them to have as little internal state as possible in order to be as predictable and consistent as possible, we don't want to have functionality here. We don't want to embed a whole lot of JavaScript functionality, callbacks and such, that will do magical things to the system. Because, well, we, um, goodness, my brain. Um, well, because that makes it harder for components to affect other parts of the system. Let me, let me, try, and, let me try and think of an example of this. If you have a shopping cart website and you have a list of products and you want to add a product to the shopping cart you can click a button next to the product and if we have the JavaScript functionality to add it to a cart in the product then how do we get the shopping cart to update well we may have to do something like reference the shopping cart by CSS selector and change its textual property or something like that but when we're writing React components, what we're after is that the component fully encapsulates all the logic that it needs to determine what markup it must render. And that's it. No external connections if we can avoid them. As little internal state as possible if we can avoid it. So the first approach would be to try and put JavaScript into the component to get it to change its state. The second would be to expect that it will be told what to do. That might be a little bit confusing. So let me try and illustrate this a little bit more. If we had something like time to edit as a function, uh, we're doing some React stuff. 
<laughs> um, if we had time to edit as a function, and we did.